welcome to Info Hub Recap. We look back at the past week's main issues. In our headlines, the United States hints at its support for Ghana's territorial integrity with its independence message to Ghana. Foreign Minister joins Ghanaians in New York for independence celebrations. More residents get connected online. Armenian villages elect first female Tushaus. And the nation's first health expo gets underway at the Safai Exhibition Complex. Stay tuned for the details of these and more. The United States has signaled strong support for Guyana's territorial integrity case in its Independence Day message. Here is Tiffany Rodias. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo laid out what the United States deems to be the country's true geographical borders in his independence message. Pompeo wished, quote, the people of Guyana from the Quarantine to the Pacaraimas, from the Takatu to the Amakura, and across the entire land of many waters, a happy Independence Day celebration, end quote. The Amakura River is in Region 1 and forms part of the northern section of the international boundary with Venezuela. Its mention is seen as a subtle message of support at a time when Guyana has approached the International Court of Justice in order to settle the border controversy with its neighbor once and for all. The Pacaraima Mountains and the Takatu River border Brazil, while the quarantine represents the border with Suriname. Pompeo also said his country looks, quote, forward to advancing prosperity by helping Guyana to develop its emerging oil sector in partnership with U.S. business, end quote. It comes at a time when American oil giants Exxon and Hess are less than two years away from production offshore, the revenues from which are expected to transform the country. For Info Hub, Tiffany Rogers. Foreign Minister Carl Greenwich joined the Guyanese diaspora in New York as they celebrated our 52nd independence anniversary with a flag-raising ceremony. Our senior videographer, Kwesi Wishard, traveled with the vice president and brought back these images as Alexis Rodney reports. Minister of Foreign Affairs Carl Greenwich told business investors in Atlanta, Georgia, there are opportunities for knowledge intensive and other services along the supply chain of the oil and gas sector. One has to look at the look at the services that are being um, required and try and ensure that you can um, find advantage in putting together packages of skills that can deal and meet the needs or demands of the company. Minister Greenwich recently met with the Minority Business Development Agency, MBDA, at Georgia Tech. The meeting was facilitated by Liberal Management Group. The group provides management and consulting services to federal government entities in the U.S. Facilitator Stacey Mollison said the engagement gave businesses the opportunity to take a new look at Guyana. It's really important, not because I come from Guyana, but because there's so much happening in Guyana now, I wanted to have real and true um, diaspora engagement in terms of who we can bring to look at opportunities in the country. Georgia Tech's MBDA is part of the school's economic development with a focus on job creation. MBDA works with minority firms to improve their capacities. Minister Greenwich also mentioned the investment opportunities in mining, infrastructure and other major developmental projects. For Info Hub, Tiffany Rogers. The Youth Department's exhibition and display in Region 3 officially brought the curtains down on National Youth Week 2018 activities. Crystal Stahl has more. The West Damarara Secondary School exhibition gives students an opportunity to learn more about the Youth Department's available programs. Director of Youth, Melissa Carmichael Haynes. The Youth Department on exhibition. So if uh, the young people want to know what we do at the Department of Youth, what are the programs available to them, what opportunities we can provide, today is the day we give them that opportunity. Regional Executive Officer Dennis Jaikaran said the administration supported the exhibition. This exhibition today is one in which you would have had a part in terms of its planning, providing for the department, the venue, and being able to organize some of the agencies that are here. Students from secondary schools across the region also visited the exhibition. This year's Youth Week activities were hosted under the theme Empowering Young People to Foster National and Community Development Through Innovation. Crystal Stahl for InfoHub. 
Stacey Carmichael now tells us that the debate on snail mail versus email is back on the front burner as regional and international postal officials gathered here in Georgetown for an e-commerce workshop. The hot-button topic was needed for a technologically advanced postage system. Round two of the operational readiness for e-commerce workshop began today. Minister of Public Telecommunications Catherine Hughes underscored the importance of having a postal system that matches the technological advances taking place worldwide. Minister Hughes called for a transformation of the existing business model, changing the way postal services are delivered. The foundation of this transformation is, as each of you knows even better than I do, is e-commerce. This and this alone will determine our survival rate, so to speak, given today's seemingly insurmountable costs, infrastructure upkeep, equipment, staff, and many, many more that I know each of you as leaders of the post offices in your countries are intimately aware of. The transformation the public telecommunications minister said is achievable if change is embraced. Plans put in place and staff re-educated to accommodate the change. Deputy Commissioner General Guyana Revenue Authority, Hima Khan, said the authority is taking the necessary steps to ensure an efficient service. We are going to be launching the electronic single administrative document in August of this year. This is the pilot and then we will be implementing module by module later in this year. So I find that this workshop comes at an opportune time to ensure that we get our requirements right for the implementation of the EDS interface. As a region, we should be able to learn from the experiences of our counterparts. The workshop lasts five days. Participants include representatives of the World Customs Organization, Universal Postal Union, and the Caribbean Postal Union, among others. With videographer Anil Silal, Stacey Carmichael for InfoHub. Ghana's technology revolution is moving ahead at breakneck speed. Sophia is the latest stop where over 3,500 residents will benefit from a new ICT hub. Here are details from a rookie communications officer, Kimberly Ferreira. The project is a collaborative effort between the administration's e-government unit, the United States Agency for International Development, and the Community Development Council. Residents welcome the initiative. Sometime home, I think the internet. I might come here for help to, um, to do your work and it will benefit us because we will get to do our work and plus get to submit your assignments and so For me it's an opportunity to teach because I have the internet at home and I do a lot of researching. Uh, I've recently got started on some stuff like video editing and just learning to use the camera and a lot of stuff about photography. and. This ICT hub is for me an opportunity to be able to teach some of the youngsters in my neighborhood a lot of the things that I would have learned because it helps to create job opportunities for them. Minister of Public Telecommunications, Catherine Hughes, encouraged residents of all ages to take advantage of the opportunity. It is a joy to be here. This is a partnership. Let us go forward and develop our communities. Let us build ourselves. There's loads of free online learning and courses that you can do. So use the internet and sign up. And let's better our skills. Let's make Guyana one of the places where we got really top-notch skills in ICT. The Sapphire ICT Hub is 119 to have been established. For InfoHub, Kimberly Ferreira. Last week, Barbados elected its first female Prime Minister, Mia Motley. Another B has elected its first female leader, Baramita. Ghana's largest indigenous community has elected its first female Tushau. And she, like Prime Minister Motley, has major transformational plans on her mind. I really want to help the indigenous people in Baramita. And I think for so long that people... Like the ex consuls they didn't really pay much mind to the indigenous people in here. So I've seen the need, so that is why I, I come forward and, you know, get on board and campaign. The newly elected Tushau Charmin Rambuju explained that one of her first plans is to establish a community skills training center for Barmi to use. The Tushau will also encourage more subsistence farming she intends to partner with agencies including GLDA and NARI for technical and other support. We have like school kitchen and we have to send greens all the way from Georgetown, which in 
if we have somebody here to guide people like and to advise them on how to do these greens farming and these things, we would able to supply the school kitchen because there's hundreds of school children be going to school every day and at least that would be an income for the community. Natusha wants to tackle Barmy to social challenges including alcohol abuse and suicide. She wants to partner with NGOs and other agencies to combat these problems. The newly elected Tusha plans to reintroduce the toll gate system to monitor the amount of alcohol entering the community. This will also be a source of income for the village. Tushal Ramaju was elected from a field of four candidates comprising another woman and two men. Fourteen councillors were elected to support the Tushal and serve the 22 satellite communities. Sinigo Thorne for InfoHub. Pakuri joined Baramita and Santa Rosa in electing its first female Tushal. Alexis joins us again with this report. Pakuri or St. Cuthbert's Mission, as it is commonly known, recently elected its first female Tushal. Senior Mistress Beverly Klenkian says her step into the political arena stemmed from her desire to push development in the only Amerindian settlement in Region 4. Um, what inspired me to take up this challenge is because I wanted to see development in my community and to see and to play a great, great role in leadership as, wom as a woman in my community. Additionally, Klenkian intends to serve with distinction by working across the divide to improve the status quo within her community. One of my main plans is transparency and to develop my community. To work together with my um, resident, to be as one, to go to them home to home and you know chat with them, their issue, the issues affecting them, so that we can work it out together as one and come together to cooperate so that we can develop our community. Tushau Beverly Klenkian replaces Lennox Schumann and will join at least two other recently elected women at the National Tushau Council. Juanita Phillips of Santa Rosa and Sharmin Rambaju of Barmita Region 1. Alexis Rodney for InfoHome. As the final report of the Ghana Prison Service Inmate Survey was handed over Monday, the Minister of Public Security says civil society must work with government to prevent youths being criminalized. Here is Delicia Haynes. Minister Kemraj Ramjatan made the call today at the handing over of the final report of the Guyana Prison Service Inmates Survey at the Police Training Center, Eve Leary. Because many of the triggers of youth involvement in crime are within our society, there is need for communities and civil society groups to work alongside government in correcting many of the society's ills that eventually criminalize our youth. Minister Ramjatan added that the main findings of the IDB-funded survey showed that several inmates were exposed to various criminal settings or in such a context outside of the prison wall. One out of four inmates reported that their father or mother's partner used to beat their mothers. In four out of ten cases, the inmates' parents or adults with whom they lived as children drank alcohol frequently. One out of five inmates said that their gangs or members belonging to criminal groups in the neighborhood where they lived as minors. Four out of ten inmates stated that they had a family member who had been sent to prison before. Meanwhile, IDB's country representative Sophie McConan explained that the findings will aid in the establishment and implementation of policies based on scientific investigation and not mere suspicions. It's about really evidence-based policy and that's important. It's to have your policies that are responding to reality and not the, not the opposite. Otherwise, your policies in any country will not be able to be as effective as they would need. The survey was conducted in collaboration with the University of Guyana, the Center for American Studies on Crime and Violence, the National University of Tres de Febrero of Argentina, and IDB. It is as part of the Ministry of Public Security's Citizen Security Strengthening Program. For InfoHub, Delicia Haynes. Almost two dozen additional persons have been trained for specialist work in the oil and gas sector. Here are details from Alexis Rodney. 22 young Guyanese on Monday formed part of the first batch of graduates from Total Tech International Marine and Petroleum Training Academy at Houston, East Bank de Marara. 
The training will position the young men to take on leading roles in the evolving oil and gas sector. At the graduation ceremony on Monday, Total Tech's Chief Executive Officer, Lars Mangel, said hundreds of Guyanese will have to be prepared for what is to come. The first ambition we had and set was that we would uh, really uh, champion and foster the development of Guyanese participation in the industry. So in Guyana's oil and gas industry, we would ensure that we would enable and certify uh, so that Guyanese could actually access jobs within the industry at a much faster pace. Total Tech has been garnering support from a number of key stakeholders and investors. Minister of Natural Resources Rafael Trotman commended the company's initiative and the students for their drive and enthusiasm. Some of the graduates shared their thoughts on the training. The nine-week course was a very compact nine weeks based on safety and necessity, well, necessary uh, courses that will put us on the standard or put us in a, make us competent towards the oil and gas industry. Well, it is a great pleasure being in this training. Uh, it uplifts your skills, uplifts your knowledge in safety and different areas. This is a new sector coming to Guyana, so it's a great opportunity. This was exciting. Um, at the first, it was quite challenging given that, you know, oil and gas is new in Guyana and we have to adapt to it. It was challenging for me, but I overcome the challenges by the constant interventions by the, by the lecturers. They constantly would you know, clear up whatever difficulty we have within the classroom. The program comprised theory and practical training in a vast number of areas, including safety awareness, environmental best practice, emergency response, and oil and gas operations. Alexis Rodney for InfoHub. Mega conglomerate banks DIH's revenues are trending upward. This is an unmistakable sign that Ghana's economy is making strides. Crystal joins us with this report. Beverage giant Banks DIH Limited has reported a 6% revenue increase in the first quarter of 2018, reaching some $15.8 billion compared to $14.9 billion for the same period in 2017. Profits for the company has also increased by 9%, seeing $1.43 billion compared to $1.32 billion during the same period last year. According to the company, that sum indicates a dividend for shareholders amounting to $238 million, or $0.28 per share. With its countrywide distribution network, Banks DIH is considered the leading company. In his report, company chairman Clifford Rees said the growth was from an increase in dollar sales, physical growth in case sales, and efficiencies in the manufacturing processes. These, he said, were all derived from capital investments in new plant and machinery for the production departments. The company's financial holding, Citizens Bank, also reported an unaudited profit after tax of $277 million. According to the chairman, it is ready to respond to the opportunities within the petroleum and gas sector, and the need for local content input will present. Plans for the second half of 2018 include a solar energy program at the OMG restaurant and new packaging lines for its biscuits and ice cream products, among other areas. Crystal Stahl for InfoHub. The Ministry of Social Protection is not letting up in the fight against trafficking in persons. A Parika shopkeeper was recently sentenced to three years in prison for trafficking a young girl in the Mousy Backdam. Sneaker Thorne reports. It is reported that between January 13 to 20, 2014, Loretta Hyman recruited and transported two women to the Mousy Backdam for the purpose of sexual exploitation. Tip coordinator Tanisha Williams Kerbin explained that Hyman was only convicted on one count of trafficking in person since the other victim refused to give evidence in the matter. Those young ladies were subjected to various forms of exploitation. Justice was served where the conviction was ordered. Williams Kerbin explained that the matter was tried ex parte, which means that Hyman was not present during the proceedings. We are pleading with the Ghana police goes to take necessary actions in order to ensure that Loretta Hyman is found so that she can you know, face her sentence. In 2014, Hyman's daughter recruited the two women to work as a cook and a shopkeeper at their shop. On their arrival, the accused told the women that there were only vacancies for sex workers. 
The girl refused and called their relatives, who immediately contacted the Ministry of Social Protection. Measures were taken to rescue the females and have the accused stand trial in the court. Sinica Thorne, InfoHub. In another significant upgrade to the delivery of health services, the new Amsterdam and Bartica hospitals are getting new CT scanners. Delicia Haynes reports. The operationalization of the computed tomography CT scan machine at New Amsterdam in Region 6 is expected to begin July 1, 2018. Modifications needed to be done to the facility before the installation of the equipment. From July 1st, the services will be made possible to residents of New Amsterdam. Not only New Amsterdam, the entire East Burbies. We find that half of our transfers to GPHC is because of injury to the head. Uh, we cannot diagnose and treat here because we did not have a CT scan machine. But now with that being in place, we'll be, we'll be reducing the number of transfers to GPHC. Hence, providing better services to the residents of East Burby's current team. The Bartica Regional Hospital is also constructing a building to house its CT scanner. This is expected to be completed shortly. After a supervisory visit conducted by Minister within the Ministry of Public Health, Dr. Karen Cummins, the machine is expected to be functioning before September. I also saw the CT scan, the building where we're going to put the CT scan very soon. Um, it's about, I would say, about 80% complete. Um, what's left there now is just some doors and a little tiling and um, uh, windows, I think, and maybe just some the electrical work. Both regions had acquired the machines after a donation from RAD Aid in 2016. These machines will offset the high number of daily referrals to the Georgetown Public Hospital. For InfoHub, Delicia Hints. And we have an important public service message for all eligible voters. GCOM's registration is underway until July 22. Visit the office in your area to get registered to vote. Remember, local government elections are due by the end of this year. Guy Expo 2.0, that is how Business Minister Dominic Gaskin has dubbed Ghana's first business-to-business -business trade exhibition set for September. The event will serve as a platform for local businesses to network with international buyers and investors. Crystal Stoll reports. Minister of Business Dominic Gaskin described the trade show as an improved model of Guy Expo, which aims to promote Guyana as an investment destination. We have been thinking for some time about how we can improve the Guy Expo model. And it's not that we have anything against Guy Expo, but I don't think that Guy Expo was meeting the or achieving the kind of outcomes that we as a government are looking for. It was successful in its own way, but we wanted a model that was more focused on matching exhibitors with um, potential buyers, international buyers, and promoting exports. Minister Gaskin said the initiative is designed to increase sustainable private sector investment and increase value-added production and exports in Guyana. It is an important initiative for the Ministry of Business and we want to get it right, and we, we have to get it right. Participating businesses must receive tangible long-term benefits through interactions with international buyers attending this expo. They will also receive capacity development training uh, to prepare them for, the, for trade through participation. Businesses interested in participating in the exposition can register through the Guyana Office for Investment. The Guyana Trade and Investment Exhibition is expected to be an annual event. Crystal Stahl for InfoHub. 26% of the Amerindian land demarcation has been completed and over $500 million has been spent on the Amerindian land titling project. Alexis Rodney reports that the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs is seeking an extension to the project. The project, which began in 2013, will end in October. Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs Sidney Alicock said while work is progressing, there have been some technical and political issues within some communities. Addressing the Parliamentary Sectoral Committee on Natural Resources at the National Assembly today, Minister Alicock explained that the situation is not about money, but time. We know that the, 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 the work is time consuming. So, so you say, are you suggesting that you need more manpower? That is what we are. We need time, we need manpower, we need uh, equipment. And that is what we have been embarking upon. 
Speaking to journalists after the formal meeting chaired by Member of Parliament Odinga Lumumba, he said that much could have been accomplished were it not for the teething problems in some indigenous villages. These include court cases and some political deadlock. The ministry is hoping to have at least four Amerindian communities demarcated by October and with an extension begin with the process in other communities. I have not been able to try to any village because we want to do things that is um, truly reflected in the, the free, prior and, and informed consent process. We have found a lot of um, communities that have been, I think, badly treated. We have uh, the boundaries are not correct and the people keep complaining. It's more than I could actually explain here. With the challenges within these communities, Minister Alicock surmises that the project could come to an end in maybe 10 years' time. Alexis Rodney for InfoHub. President David Granger at Wednesday's opening of Health Expo 2018 reaffirmed government's commitment to ensuring access to proper health care for all Guyanese. More in this Stacey Carmichael report. President David Granger, speaking at the opening ceremony of Health Expo 2018, said if Guyana is to achieve the objectives of Sustainable Development Goal number 3, it must protect the priorities in our national health strategy. Sustainable Development Goal number 3 speaks to the well-being of people of all ages. Guyana is committed to the objective of a better life with good health. An objective that is in accordance with Sustainable Development Goal number 3, as you've heard before, of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, healthy lives and human well-being. The priorities of the National Health Strategy include universal access to public health coverage, universal primary and preventative health care. Primary health care, the head of state noted, is a pillar of this strategy titled Health Vision 2020. Prevention. Prevention is the first step in primary health care. Preventive health care is central to universal public health coverage, to primary health care and the delivery of public health services. No public health system and no national health strategy would be complete or successful without emphasizing the importance of preventive care. Following the ceremonial cutting of the ribbon, President Granger, Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu, his wife Mrs. Sita Nagamutu, Public Health Minister Valda Lawrence and other ministers of government visited several booths at the expo. Minister of Social Cohesion Dr. George Norton extended condolences on government's behalf to the family, friends and fans of Calypso legend Mighty Rebel, whose real name is Godfrey Phillips. Rebel passed early Thursday morning. He suffered a stroke and was confined to his home for over a year. Minister Norton visited him last week at his residence on the west bank of Demerara. The 72-year-old is a six-time national Calypsonian, renowned for his witty lyrics and biting satire. DPI also sends condolences to the mighty rebels, family and friends. The future of Guyana has never looked better. Our nation is on the cusp of a development program like never seen before. While Guyana is now emerging as an energy giant through the discovery of massive reserves of oil and natural gas, it is your government's intention that the huge benefits emerging from this will go where it matters most to you, the people of this beloved country. There is a surge of confidence in the way Guyana is governed once again, and the level of investor interest is unprecedented. Guyana is poised to become the breadbasket of the region, and the pace at which this nation will grow through prudent fiscal management will be nothing short of impressive. But more than anything else will be the way every Guyanese regardless of color, class, or creed, becomes a part of this historic period of national transformation, sharing in the wealth and well-being of it all as one Guyana.